A to the right, the harbour, it's a bit like the Millennium Stadium in Cardiff. You cannot miss the fact that you are part of rugby civilization here and rugby is the heartbeat of this place. George Clancy took charge of Bath's win in Toulouse almost exactly a year ago. They will draw hope and inspiration from that over the next couple of hours. Two of the ten teams who've been European champions. Bath 18 years ago now and they kick off against the defending champions in red. Toulon playing from right to left in this first half. Playing each other for the very first time on the mildest of winter's days on the Côte d'Azur. Toulon fly half is Eric Escander, and you will recognise their number 10, Quade Cooper. Yeah, good afternoon everyone. I'm sure Bath will try and take inspiration from that performance against Toulouse as a blueprint for how they want to play this game. Obviously the start so crucial. Mike Ford before the game talking about playing in the right areas of the field and playing with tempo. First line out for Rob Webber. Not missed the Champions Cup match yet for Bath. And he's accurate enough with that first line out. Ford away quickly with Quade Cooper off in support and Banahan running an aggressive line immediately through midfield. Chris Cook, scrum half for Bath today in the absence of Matawalu. They've got um, Johnny Evans on the bench. Taken on by Weber. Such a big game for Ford. He'll relish the chance to reaffirm his big match credentials today and he will have the first opportunity you would have thought to kick for the posts via the penalty outstanding start to the game for bath kick off receipt fantastic pressure under quay cooper is exactly what they want but all started from this set piece here you see banahan his line just really bisected mar nonu and quay cooper that's got to be causing concerns and then matt garvey that's exactly what you want your big ball carriers into the game early Toulon infringes because of that pressure given George Ford an early start and an easy opportunity to get points on the board. Still only 22, George Ford. It's easy to overlook that fact. He's signed an extended contract with the club before Christmas. He's very much in it for the long term. This kick within range. Still winter's day. Don't have to worry too much about the elements. The familiar honed routine, head down, followed through, three points for Bath. Yeah, no elements to worry about, but just the, uh, the jeering from the crowds. But I'm sure George Ford, having played plenty of international rugby, will be well used to that. Restart very nearly into the arms of Dominic Day, but it's um, too long possession off that. Driven forward by Juan Smith. 50% of the back rowers today speak with South African accents. There's a New Zealand accented centre who's part of the broth these days. Nonu involving himself and then a little chip through from Cooper. And Toulon responding well. First chance they've really had to get their punches away. Yeah, and it all came from Bath just not being able to take the kickoff. Just gives Toulon those first few phases. But really encouraging from a Bath perspective was the line speed that we saw from the defensive line coming up and making the hits. A slip as the ball was cleared by Cook. But in the circumstances, he's got great distance. That's unbelievable. Under pressure at the line Chris Cook has been brought in due to an injury to Matawalu. But what an introduction for him. Four minutes, able to send the ball 60 metres back into Toulon's half. If Bath are going to have any chance of winning today, it's going to be about that territory game. Perfect example from that at number nine. Stay two metres. Seven, stay two metres. This is um, Girardo, newly appointed France captain. Guy Nervis's choice to take the squad into the Six Nations. Constantine Makotadze, not far away. 
giant six foot seven Georgian wearing five today. They don't lack for bulk in that Toulon pack and they've drawn the penalty. Bath were offside. Not taken from the right place, so Eric Escand has to be shepherded back. Yeah, seven just players, players. saying that Bath had handled that driving maul from Toulon really, really well. Yeah. They pushed it all the way to the touchline. Just unfortunate their eagerness to get up off that line. They give away a little soft penalty and allow Toulon the opportunity just to put the ball just outside the 22. But look at this, Garvey there, he's there legally, he's OK. This time, a defensive bath line out. Oh, it's been brilliantly stolen by Hooper. First time he's enjoyed the delights of this place. He was so looking forward to it this week. The, the perfect remedy, really, he thought, to the way they performed at Kingston Park last weekend. They have to get it right today, and he got that right, burgling the ball. And again, off the left boot, Chris Cook. One of those confidence scrum halves, and if he gets going... He'll start to find good spaces, and Banahan was chasing that kick hard. The ball was lost forward. Bath will have the scrum. Outstanding once again from Chris Cook. We saw him kick the ball 60 metres out into touch. But if you are going to kick to this back three of Toulon, to us over Habana, James O'Connor, you have to put them under pressure. Fantastic kick, made even better from the chase from Matt Banahan. But it's his work after the tackle. He gets up on his feet, Might drives kick, through. Francois Lowe, he's certainly not shy in terms of the ruck. That pressure at the breakdown forces the knock-on from Fernandez Lobe. Brilliant, really good intensity and start from Bath. I have to say the inclusion of Cook at the expense of Matawalu is probably, no disrespect, it probably plays into Bath's hands in terms of the way they want to try and play this game with his accurate box kicking and the pace that he's, he's got with his service as well. And just looking at how Bath are actually set up off this scrum, I wouldn't be surprised if George Ford just tries to get this ball to Jonathan Joseph on a miss pass, getting on the out, trying to attack Bastero, trying to suck in Habana and using the pace of Anthony Watson and Rocky Dagooni in that wide channel. They've got to win the ball back first, and they were a little bit too eager at that scrum. Here is Bastero. A tough week for the barrel of a man. He's lost his place in the French squad and he lost the ball there. Well, I tell you what, big hand to George Ford. You know, he may give a lot of weight away to the likes of Bastereau, but he got up off the line really quickly there. He came from back 10. Look at that. Looks like he gets bumped off, but he manages to dislodge the ball. That's 1 0 to George Ford. Watching this Bath scrum tutored by Neil Hatley this week down at Harley Farley House they're going to be aggressive they think this is an area that they really might be able to profit from they will push and push and push and really try and put some pressure on this Toulon 8 in the scrum it's just the basics of the game it's the area that I know that they've worked very hard on look at that work's paid off not drawn a penalty Needs to be used now, and uh, there's some work to do to win it back. There it is for Weber. Ford over the head of Havana, who readjusted well. Uh, on the second bounce for Anthony Watson, one of those who missed the defeat at Newcastle, but he's back involved. James O'Connor with Dylan Armitage amongst the injured Toulon absentees, Lee Halfpenny as well of course, but goodness me, they can bring in O'Connor to fill the 15 shirt. This is Mikotadze. Back is brought to an Ali Williams amongst the list of those no longer at the club. And Cooper has gone far too long and just another indication of the kind of moments that are frustrating the likes of Murad Bujalal, the owner at the moment. He's He needs to pull his socks up, he's, he's not paying his mortgage at the moment yeah no I completely understand what he's saying Quay Cooper Mercurial player unbelievable skill set from the guy but often he does get things wrong but I have to say his kicking from 60 meters out you've got to pay respect to that bath in terms of their line speed their physicality the only reason he's kicking is because he doesn't have options 
And when you've got a back line of Nonu and Bastero and you still don't have options, it's because the defence is certainly winning at the moment. Houston's waiting. He stood off that line out. Oh, and he did well. Evaded first couple of tackles and then worked hard when he was hit. Ford once again. Cross field. O'Connor and Habana are both underneath it. Oh, that was brilliantly taken. Outrageous from Rocco de Guni to get that high to win a ball that really didn't belong to him and as well as Talon have done to clear their lines that was top top work from Samisa Rocco de Guni. Yeah it was an excellent kick from George Ford as well after a really strong carry by Houston. Look at that lands it right between the two and Rocco de Guni gets himself up and actually O'Connor does brilliantly to recover the situation but Barr still got the put into the line out. Lawrence you can't underestimate what a difficult skill that is from James O'Connor for the ball to land perfectly on top of you to catch the ball under that pressure two hands above your head is outstanding he really bailed him out of trouble then taken by Hooper to Houston Cook now Eastman Joseph tackled by Cooper Cook again got rather scrag there and he was scrag legally George Clancy Irish referee, here goes Houston again. He's already hit ahead of steam, but he ran into Juan Smith and others there. Ford, once more, heads up, looking for the touchline, and does it perfectly, despite the appeals of the Toulon fullback O'Connor. Well, it was a beautiful kick, wasn't it, from George Ford. Weighted it perfectly, exactly what his side needed after the carry from Houston ends up getting knocked backwards. When you get up, your forwards off the floor, that's what you want to see. He spent more than an afternoon in the hairdressers, hasn't he, this week, James O'Connor, I think? Yeah, I mean, he looks like an anorexic Craig David at the minute, but he's playing pretty well. I mean, I'll talk about his skills all day, but his barnet is sorting out. He's let me down. <laughs> slap back. That, at the moment, will feel all right with the way the set piece is going. With a bit of a nudge in the scrum, and they're winning balls aerially as well. This is Garvey. Started every game this season. Ford once again loving Banahan to have a little trundle up the middle it's time Banahan holding on under some pressure yeah unfortunately Suter who makes the tackle just gets himself between Banahan and the support he's trying to push the ball back almost in a squeeze ball style between the legs but unfortunately just gets himself isolated you see here Banahan making the carry good double hit and Suter just falls the wrong side Sometimes the referee, you see them penalising and it go the other way. But what a plus to have that man there, Stuart Hooper, back. You know, talk about his experience in this sort of cauldron environment. He's put his hand up literally twice already in his lineouts. Captain again, Captain. Sean Smith and Vermoylen at the tail. And it is the second of the South Africans that they hit. Nicely done by Bastero and Cooper gets castled in midfield by Rocco de Guni, who's had a busy 60 seconds or so. Mikotadze pulled his weight for Georgia at the World Cup, now in red. This is Jasua Tuasova. He's um, been one of the shiniest lights this season for Toulon in the top 14. Here goes Smith. All the experience of 70 Springbok caps were playing the advantage here. Cooper knows that. Tries to offload it to Tua Sova. Ball's gone forward. Back for the offside penalty. And they're trying to get on with it. Hang on, guys. I have to give you the, I have to give you the mark, guys. It's offside here. Cap, scrum half. Captain. Captain. Uh, no, I just... No, no, I want you to, please. You're OK. Captain. So he wants to take a quick tap penalty. He must look to my mark. It's twice, okay? Look to me, look to me, okay? And it's a couple of times Talon have tried to get on with things, but from the wrong position. Yeah, a couple of strong carries. First from Nonu getting in behind. And uh, Bath, he reasonably happy though, just to settle things down. And only concede the penalty there. Talon were 
by their own admission, some way off their best here last weekend. They still beat Poe in the top 14, but they have generally been getting better and better and better since November, and that shock defeat at Wasps, they were a pale shadow of themselves that day at the Rico. They could move within a point today of the pool leaders, Wasps, who come here next Sunday. This, of course, one of the rearranged fixtures that forced by the Paris atrocities and the postponements that followed. This from a scan to square things up. We are level and thoroughly deserved. The hosts have wrestled their way back into this. Toulon 3, Bath 3. Quarter of an hour gone. Ball off a, a Bath hand. Yeah, again, it's that combination, George Ball putting it literally a yard away from the touchline. Just getting a little bit tasty there. Garrado seen something, but the referee's quick to split them up. Just puts it on Matt Bannon, unfortunately, in jumping up, just knocks the ball on forward, scrum down to Toulon. Just to, um, just to give you a picture of, of the table in Paul Five at the moment. Wasps the top, played four with 14 points. Toulon second, played three, eight points. Home and away wins against Leinster for them so far. Bath also on eight points, having played three. Beat Leinster, one at Wasps, lost to Wasps at the wreck. That's where we are right now. Well, that is great disruption. But the penalty is actually going to go against the Bath front row Max Laheef I think that's pretty harsh penalty I'm sure when they reflect yeah <laughs> Davy Wilson having a few words to himself about that excellent second shove look at that Toulon trying to control the ball Brian Smith's got no idea where it goes this will give us a better view yeah Max Laheef's penalized for coming in on the angle there but just felt the momentum was already there. Just joining us, Max Lahiv starting because Nick Autorak was a late withdrawal. Nathan Katz being brought onto the bench for Bath. A scandal. A little bit of help from Tua Sober, but the right winger didn't get the ball. It's been a dominant five minutes or so for Toulon fought their way back into this match well after going behind early on Suter took it over the 10 meter line now Cooper looking for the options and O'Connor's the best one we know what he can do lost in the tackle James O'Connor came to pay us a visit last night while we were out enjoying ourselves down by uh, down by the men he's thoroughly enjoying himself here Hugo. he certainly is but you look at the threat of Quay Cooper just running with the ball in hands flat to the line that skip pass there to James O'Connor yeah, if he was just able just to secure that ball he would have had a banner one-on-one with Anthony Watson that certainly is a mismatch but the first 10-15 minutes Bath have purely played on emotion they've been outstanding and clinical in terms of their kicking but Toulon and now finds on a foothold and a way back into this game Martin Fernandez lobby amongst those in red trying to repel what's about to come from them in black. Well, they've done well. It's a little bit of a shove on there as Weber hooked that ball back, and Houston needed some ferocious work to find some room for himself and then for Wilson to spin the ball away. Cleared away by Ford, cleared high. Brilliantly done by Banahan. Brilliantly done. And this is Watson. He's under a lot of pressure from O'Connor. Come forward, hopefully. Now Ford thought about the long kick. Went instead for the little chip to Rocco de Gooney. There were cries of offside in the main stand here around us, but not so according to the officials. However, home voices in the end have their way, and Hooper and Habana getting involved, and then... Joanne Smith as well. 
And Rob Webber's in the thick of this. It's all getting a little bit fruity. Well, it's kind of expected, I, I think. Bath, Stuart Hooper. Habana did brilliantly initially to make the tackle of Rocco Laguna get straight to his feet. Be interesting to see whether he actually released him before he played the ball. But the penalty went to him and now... The officials will sort this out. Yeah, might take some sorting out. Sean Gallagher and Mark Connolly are the assistant referees. Touch judges. No, we're not. After the whistle is blown, your players are reacting to something. Okay, no, that must stop right now. All right, so gonna stop. Okay, you deal with that now. Can I have a chip? Yeah. Come, come. Two, um, two captains who do the political work very well with, uh, with the law and order. Yeah, I'll be interested to, to understand and hear exactly okay. what was said. I say Juan Smith or Fernandez Lobby himself would just be saying, guys, settle it down, we don't need to. We're a good side, we're playing at home. Stuart Hooper, I think they needed that fight. I think they need that edge. Okay, when you come to a place like this, you don't give anything away. You bring that fire, you need to be the protagonist. And that's exactly what they brought for 20 minutes. That's Kuta gone with this kick. Into the arms of Rocco de Guni. And Rocco de Guni's on his travels. And finds Joseph. Banahan's eagerly waiting beyond him, but it never came. Banahan now part of the clear out posse. For Cook, the scrum half to Ford. Taken on by Wilson. Ford again, not for the first time. Angled the kick. What about this from Cooper? That was much better. Well, it's a lovely break from Rocket Aguni from the missed kick to touch from Toulon, but just wonder whether George Ford might have had a, a call outside in there. Bath looked to have numbers on Toulon. Instead, he went and put boots a ball. We spoke before the game, Sarah. Jonathan Joseph, he will be prominent today. He is their get out of jail card. His pace in that 13 channel. They said they're going to run today. They're certainly a side fit enough to be able to do that. And he showed exactly what he can do in that moment there. No play from anywhere. Oh, once again, Hooper rising as he took the ball. Oh, that might not be the best idea in the world. Straight into the pocket of O'Connor. No Armitage or Halfpenny still today. Cooper, Freddie Michelin amongst... Toulon's star-studded replacements. Oh, Ford brought it round as if to kick on his right foot and then he stepped off it instead and went beyond Mikotadze and he's taken the ball up to the 10-metre line. Weber, this is low. Runs around the attempted tackle of Nonu and then Banahan boot to ball, inviting Cooper into a little bit more work. Six. Cook to Watson. Bath are running the ball confidently, and they've taken it over halfway. Ford again, this time straight down the middle and Joseph will chase, but it's just a little bit too close to Habana, who has the outlet of O'Connor. It's, uh, it's a fascinating little contest at the moment. It certainly is. I think Bath are actually winning that middle third. Mike Ford before the game said it's going to be all important, but we've got a beautiful view from up here. I love the fact that George Ford, he's a guy that plays of instinct. He's obviously very confident. They've been told to go out and run these guys ragged. And that kicking duo, that kick tennis, I think Bath, are, I think it will pay dividends in the 60th minute. I'm looking at the middle of the pitch. Two us over, he looks like he's hanging a bit, he's blowing. Mika Tadzi in the middle of the pitch. He's tiring. These guys are big powerful men you want to run them ragged you don't want to get into arm wrestle with them bath are playing it perfectly let's go a nice big gap european rugby for the next three weekends here on bt sport next saturday we're at allianz park for saracens against ulster at 245 
Half past seven in the evening, Welford Road, Leicester against Treviso, and then on Sunday, back here for Toulon against Wasps. <laughs> going to be uh, enjoying this little spot down the med a lot over the next couple of weeks. And uh, penalty for Bath at the line-out, penalty going against Jocelyn Suter for doing a little bit too much airborne. Yeah, and it's a part of the game that's worked superbly for Bath in this opening 23, 24 minutes or so. Rob Webber throwing very accurately. I can't underestimate the role of Stuart Hooper, having him back, club captain, of course, not only giving him that edge up front, but I'm sure in training, in the build-up to today's game, just having that ability. Look at that. Suter just pulls his inside arm. I to say, by the way, that um, we've got Newport Gwent Dragons against Cast on the Friday night. Penultimate round of Paul matches in the Challenge Cup as well. Northampton against Glasgow on the Sunday. But what a position this is for Bath. Five metres out and again, Hooper held up in the air. Inviting the challenge from Toulon, which came, but Bath think they've got control of this with Houston. Driven back now by Chile Chava and co. Still in the arms of the Bath number eight. Taken on by Lowe, picked up by Weber. Yeah, just needs that support with him. They don't want to pick up on their own. This is Day. And Lowe's hurt himself. He's down on the floor, and that will add to the frustration of messing up a frustrating position. Yeah, initially, as Lowe gets some treatment there. Toulon actually repelled the attack really nicely and then Bath didn't quite have enough numbers coming around the corner. We see Day being tackled and Lowe just goes in to clear that ruck out. Just gets himself caught a bit awkwardly there with the shoulder maybe. Just a, a quick mention of tomorrow's rugby tonight as well. 8 o'clock here on BT Sport and special guest is Sir Matthew Pinson where would you have picked him in the pack I assume next to Martin Johnson but you know, that, there wasn't space for him unfortunately tall strong bloke he'd have done the job and he's uh, our guest tomorrow night remains a little bit of concern about Francois Lowe new contract this week that'll keep him at the club for another three years he's become an absolutely intrinsic cog in what Mike Ford's team are all about. Yeah, and he's very important, not just for the future with that new contract, but also for the very present here today. They need a huge game out of him. The way things are going, I don't think Quaid and Morad are going to have the, the most pleasant of conversations at the end of this match. He's, he's not done a great deal, old Quaid, so far to, to douse the boss's fire. No comment, Nick. Um, but yeah, I mean, he sliced that ball. He's probably not giving his team the field position which he wants, but he's a guy that can turn things around just in a heartbeat. No doubt we'll see that at some point today. Run out taken by Suter. Driven forward by Fernandez Lobe. And Scander having to go on the floor to win it back. And this is Florian Frizia. A rarity in this side, homegrown via the academy, grew up in this part of the world. Quaid once more goes high. This is Watson, a couple of steps to his left. And now presses the accelerator, going across field before he cuts over the 10 metre line. Cook delivers to Ford, and again it's Banahan, and now back to Ford, and that was really nicely done. And Eastman offering himself. And Guillaume Garrado is down injured. Banahan had Joseph and Rocco Daguni to his right. Instead, they'll reset to the left with Ford. Weber was offering himself, but slightly overran it. So Watson gives it a blast and runs into Tuasova. It's an important challenge from Tuasova there, stopping Watson. Drop goal from Ford, who had all the time in the world to pick his spot and drop a couple of sugars into his coffee. Bath back ahead. 
it's incredible just to think that George Ford was a man under pressure supposedly for not playing so well but his game management the composure delivering execution there brilliant he's really showcased all his talents and attributes in just the last couple of minutes his ability to see space step back in the pocket finish that off keep their nose in front outstanding started this match Hugo talking about the, the threat of Bastero and, and Nonu in the middle lane the work at the moment of Matt Banahan he's been brilliant I mean six foot seven he's outstanding in the air but his ability and his hunger just to really feed of George George Ford in and around that rock is really making holes into Toulon's then danger here however Nonu bursting through quickly from the restart Toulon immediately on the front foot Fernandez Lobe the captain 34 now Escanda Cooper O'Connor Habana's beyond him O'Connor cuts back inside Habana's still there wonderful feat from James O'Connor to set up this position for Moylan and then taken on by Smith Moylan back involved but that was lost Ford once more and Eastman in their own back garden giving it a go with Joseph again the ambition to run with the ball will they pay for it Fernandez Lobe making a nuisance of himself and forcing the penalty they most certainly will you've got to admire the ambition the feel they've got the ability to get out on the edge but unfortunately Fernandez Lobe quite rightly stays in the tackle there gets up and plays the ball Really good work there from the seasoned international. Just down on one knee. Wonderful step, wasn't it, from O'Connor? Look at this, beautiful. Off the foot, off the left foot, inside, outside. Again, tries to get the offload away, recycles the ball. They look very, very dangerous. Only a last gas tackle. Look at that coming in there. Lahif really chops down. Juan Smith. And the ambition from from Joseph and Co. James O'Connor, by the way, he's, he scored a couple of tries. Talon scored three against Poe last weekend, and he's being given the opportunity to start because of the injuries. But we're seeing the threat that he poses from 15 again today. Now then, what about Eric Escander once again to draw things level? Half an hour gone. Nope. No, um, Jonathan Pellissier today. He's been the first choice nine and ten, and first choice kicker so far this season. He's Bagnall. their top scorer thus far. They've got Sebastian Tillu board on the on the bench. Michelak as well, who will offer a kicking option. Ten minutes to half time. It's the visitors who are ahead. Habana to O'Connor, Vermeulen. Uh, arrived in time from Cape Town to make his debut in Coventry you might remember in that performance against Wasps and very much bedded in now the South African flanker here's O'Connor a wallaby when he was just 18 but he's lost that that's a great strip from Rocco de Guni in the tackle there can they get the ball back yes Watson chasing the kick from Cook O'Connor needs to be careful Watson in close proximity he had the confidence to take the hit. There's a, a hint of a high tackle as O'Connor went down, but clearing work was completed by a scander. Yeah, I think the referee quite rightly gives Watson the benefit that that didn't mean to tackle him high. O'Connor's running around the crowd, don't like it, but play on. Yeah, it was just a little bit high. James O'Connor does his very best just to swat Anthony Watson off. He just harasses James O'Connor a little bit high. The referee allows the game to play on. But what I've liked about Bath, we've spoken a lot about them. You've got to play. The, you've got to play the people in the stands as much as you've got to play the team on the pitch, and they're doing really well on both fronts, harassing Toulon at every moment. So Chris Cook standing at the front of the lineup, and now he peels off and. In the more traditional scrum half position finds Ford who finds Eastman who cannons the ball into to a sober most meters made so far by the Fijian this season defenders beaten clean breaks tops all the lists 
Joshua to a saver, but Bath have kept him relatively quiet so far. Here goes Ford again. Never missing the opportunity to bring the ball forward at the moment, Bath, and that was Banahan. Once again, though, for the second time in fairly quick succession, Bath take the ball into contact and they're not bringing it back out. Yeah, unfortunately, as you say, linked up with Banahan, but he just wasn't able to stay on his feet for long enough to get the support there, and that man, Fernando Lobe, just does stay on his feet long enough to win his side the penalty just saying another few jeers from the crowd when that kick from Quade Cooper went straight down the throat of the Bath player look at this Banahan it's good tackles to be fair gets caught long in the tackle and two men over the top from Toulon so the other man over the top was Cooper so he's doing his his best at the breakdown it's, uh, Bernard Laporte next to um, Tom Whitford, the manager, on the left-hand side in the blonde. Down, 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 down. Down, taken by Suter. That's been lost forward. Yeah, it's careless from too long. They're just still... They're getting frustrated, but it's it should be their own frustrations. The penalty's been reversed, Nick. It's frustrating for Bath. Stuart Hooper can't believe it. Well, it's good officiator from George Glantz. He said he doesn't want any messing around. Bath have let Toulon off the hook there. They fluff their lines of that line out. They knock the ball on Swan Smith as you see him there. And then just a bit of pushing and shoving. George Clancy won't stay for it. Penalty, easy decision. N completely unnecessary as well. Especially when you've, you've already defused the first threat. Stuart Hooper there just hitting Swan Smith. Now that I can understand why he took exception to that. It's good to see him back, Hooper. under six minutes to half time both sides have six points Toulon six Bath six cracking contest it is we haven't had our first try yet but it's been a thoroughly entertaining game given that both sides coming into this match probably weren't playing anywhere near what they call their very best rugby even Toulon by their own high standards are having a bit of a blip it's been a really entertaining match so far Nonu Leaves it for O'Connor. Hands in to Lahif. Fernandez Lobe waits. Instead, it's Mikatadza who gets the ball away to Cooper. Now, this is what he likes doing. On his bike, having a little look at where that might take him. Scanned there quickly. Fernandez Lobe. His contract's up at the end of this season. No guarantees yet from Bujalal that he'll be offered another one. Might alert one or two other clubs. Here's Bastereau, and it was always asking too much of Frezia, and there was a hint of the forward about it as well. Only one Toulon player actually in the squad, named by Guy Nobes for the Six Nations this week. The new captain, Guillaume Garrado. Bastereau's missed out. Mermoz has missed out. Much to the disquiet of the locals in these parts. Yeah, you, you, you don't know whether there's a little bit in that in terms of just wanting to uh, reassert a little bit of authority around uh, who has ownership of the player, whether it's the union or the, or the clubs, because rumours of some clauses in some of the contracts of some of the Toulon players in terms of availability and time and training. But Bastereau, having made the mistake, you could see desperate to, to try and make amends there. But Bath have the scrum and they've looked pretty good in the scrum so far in this match. Was talking to Toby Booth before the game he was saying that for the first time this season with the with Hooper being able to come back they were able to go full on and live in training up front and that makes such a difference you can have live scrummaging sessions you can go live mauling you could see he's just added that little bit of extra bite and aggression into this particular fixture and into this particular part of the game as well been talking already about how they've worked so hard this week on just digging the studs in and Really bending their backs at this point. Houston having to do a little bit of hoovering up there, and Cook pops it up to Ford, who, rather than kicks, invites Rocco de Guni to use his bulk. Wilson, tackled by Garrado, but the ball went backwards. Well picked up by Eastman. This is Joseph. Houston offering himself, and 
He was half aware of the presence of Bastaro in his wing mirrors. It's been a rather messy 60 seconds or so for both sides. Well, Bath would be delighted to just end up with a scrum there. Thought the referee could have just hold, held on a little bit longer in that scrum. Bath had a lovely little nudge on it. He was just about to blow his whistle for the penalty to Bath as Cook just whipped the ball out. But nowhere for Eastman to go and Bath thankfully yep. get the put into this next scrum. No, scrum attitude, needs to be, scrum attitude needs to be better when the ball comes in. But you're driving straight, this side. It's very simple. I'm sure you all heard George Clancy there. Pretty straightforward talking. Attitude, picture needs to be better from the loose head particularly. Thank you. They won't listen to him though, will they? So, David Wilson against Florian Frezier. Max Laheep on the other side against Levan Chilichava. Georgian World Cup prop. Frezier who was forcing his way up there and Houston who again does some hard work off the back of a scrum that wasn't stable for once here's Anthony Watson I'm waiting to see what role he might have in Eddie Jones Slips England into. plans for the Six Nations squad Ball is off. named on Wednesday this is Garvey Laheef back with an English club now for almost a year Can't having left Melbourne that's a really strong carry from Laheef he was isolated there Eastman to Joseph who immediately ran into Joanne Smith number two issues at the breakdown if Bath's coach is going to be critical at half time they'll be talking about the number of penalties they've coughed up here yeah and I think it's the work of the second and third player well first of all the ball carried you know, you see the two contrasting breakdowns, Lahif buying time, staying on his feet. When players go down early, it's the work of the next two arriving at the breakdown that I'm sure the Bath coaches will want to talk up at half-time. Absolutely right, but you've also got to credit the quality of the tackle. They're tackling solo, chopping just below the knees, as we see here. Also, you've got to put numbers in the ruck. Juan Smith, you're not going to beat him running north to south. Jonathan Joseph up against Juan Smith, there's only going to be one winner there. Their quality of the tackle and then their work after the tackle is outstanding. That's why they're winning so many turnovers. Final few seconds of evenly contested first 40 minutes and Hooper. Lock on here. Ball was lost forward. And... Uh, what a scrappy end to a first half that was full of much to enjoy. No tries, but um, the kicks instead from George Ford. A couple matched by Eric Escande. Brian O'Driscoll and Joe Worsley, I suspect, will have plenty to chat about in the studio. Half-time here in Toulon. The home side six. Back Talking about unbelievable budget and talent and experience of players they will find their moments they've just got to bide their time and weather this bath storm interesting to see freddie michelak on immediate half time you would have thought that perhaps he was going to replace quade cooper but cooper remains on it looks like james o'connor has been replaced and cooper may well be playing at 15 by by the looks of things the way they're they're lining up but Bernard Laporte not messing around. Change at half time with Diego Dominguez, the new head coach, watching on. But um, that's interesting. Michelak playing his first game since he got injured in that World Cup quarter final. Well, it's a big game to come in for. He's an outstanding player. He's a mercurial talent. Quay Cooper at 15. His ability to a counter attack. But he's got to be his very best. George Ford's kicking today is exceptional. Probably the best game I've seen him have all season. So he's got to be great from the back. Michelak's got to control things up front. Yeah, and it's a very clear indication as Bath go forward in this scrum and draw the penalty. What a great start, scrummaging-wise, from this Bath side. Look at that, Matt Garvey pumped. Francois Lowe slapping them on the back. But it's a very clear slap in the face for Quay Cooper as well, isn't it? He had no control of the game at 10. Not helped by his side turning the ball over, but his kicking game was poor. And he's been moved to fullback. I don't know whether... O'Connor's injured it, it it seems puzzling therefore that you just wouldn't 
take Cooper off and leave O'Connor on, who seemed to be doing all right, ball in hand. Yeah, it's a bit of a strange one. James O'Connor, outstanding last week, scored two tries against Poe. I thought he had a pretty solid first half. George Ford certainly did test him at the back of the pitch, but looked really good. Michelac really now needs to step up, as do the rest of his teammates in their intensity. But they are a wonderful side. We're talking about the three-time European champions. So Rob Webber, Bath hooker. And this time it was Fernandez Lobe who was up and getting his palms on that floated ball, but it's still Bath possession. Cook to Webber once more. Just kept out of the 22 by Smith. Now Ford, drop goal. Perhaps it's on its way. He's already got one. And he has got two. And George Ford is having the game of his season so far. Well, that was a beautiful drop goal. Just went straight back in the pocket as Fernando Lobe initially wins the ball and Hooper wins it back. Look at that. Had time, gave himself time, gave himself space. Bisected the uprights. They can hardly moan about an Englishman kicking drop goals. <laughs> they had one down here who they quite liked. They're getting a dose of Johnny's medicine this afternoon. He certainly wasn't a bad player, was he? Not back to Girardo. This is Habana. Drew Mitchell making way for the South African this weekend. Cleared away quickly and then driven on by Juan Smith. Every time Bath have scored, Toulon have responded brilliantly and with a lot of energy. And here goes Ma'a Nonu. Another big planet discovered in Toulon's solar system in recent weeks. Here's Bastereau, who's been known to astronomers for a while. To Asova. One of the relative newcomers as well. And again, they're continuing to respond well. Gerardo released by Cooper. And that's been stolen back by Cook. What's the decision of George Clancy? It's a uh, lost forward. It'll be a Toulon scrum. Yeah, great scramble defence from Bath as Toulon battering down. <laughs> With ball carrier after ball carrier, all came as we can see Bruce Craig looking on there, the Bath owner. He reasonably happy with his sides, 9-6. Ahead on the scoreboard. Let's go, guys. Chris Cook comes in over the top. And unfortunately, he's a judge to knock the ball on. Mike Ford saying this week, by the way, that um, he still had his usual couple of phone calls with, with Bruce Craig. Although Bruce did cancel lunch on Monday. Not that Mike was getting too fidgety about that I think the owner was just a little bit busy elsewhere I'll tell you something George Ford having a brilliant game 43 minutes but he's gonna to have to be on his best defensive duty Habana lurking Nonu Bastero that's a lot of weight coming down your channel potentially again George Clancy goes against the Bath loose head Lahif on the angle that's a tight tight call I'd like to have a look at that one again just a little bit of Anglo-Saxon language, which um, I might have to apologise, but two scrums who are fully competitive today. I mean, I thought they got great weight and time there, surge in their drive really, really well. Unfortunately, Lahif, a judge, had just turned himself in, and Clancy's had a chat with him th throughout the game on that. Penalty count just creeping up now. I think that's 11 now. They gave away 10 in the first half bar. So if there is that one area, it's that discipline. And the scoreboard's so tight. Can't be afford to be on the wrong side of George Clancy. Three times George Ford and Bath have edged ahead. Three times Erica Scan has reeled them back in. Nine points each. Yeah, Bath are just getting undone by that little short kickoff from Toulon every time. They're just standing a little bit too deep on kickoff receipt. And as a result of that, they've lost two or three kickoffs and handed that initiative straight after they've scored, straight back to Toulon. Let's um, see what Bath's policy at their own restart is. Once again, it's, it's the newfangled fashion these days. The, Days of all the forwards being gathered on one side of the pitch or the other, long gone. Everyone across the full 60, 65 metres. 
into the arms of Nonu. Taken on by Mikko Tadzi. And then the new man, Michelat, finding Cooper, now playing at fullback. This is Tuasova. It's been an absolute star this season. Half a dozen tries already. Fernandes Lobe providing the link. Talon just looking to accelerate on that left hand side. Stretching Bath's defence. Nonu, um, who works hard at his kicking. Well, at least he did whenever I used to watch him practicing for the All Blacks, and we saw a little bit of it there. Chase from Ford putting Michelak under some pressure, but here goes Tuasova. This is what he's been doing all season. He's an absolute flyer when he gets going. And he needed to be tackled there by Watson, who stopped him in his tracks. But Talon just beginning to ask a few more questions, and they've got a massive overlap here. Bastereau and Juan Smith, and it's been messed up. Determined Bath defence, but what an opportunity. De determined Bath defence, but you've got to say absolutely butchered by Toulon. Tua Sova has been doing this all season in the top 14. Most metres carried his balance, his power, but this is an opportunity here. It's a three on one, run straight, fix the man. Juan Smith, ball in two hands, just a little bit complacent with the ball in hands, but this is a stone cold opportunity for me. When you've got that amount of caps and you've got Brian Habana on the wing, you give him the ball, you let him score the try, you let Toulon get back right. in this game. Yeah, wonderful cover tackle for Rocco Daguni there, really got himself across and saved a certain try, but also we just saw the impact of Freddie Michelak. Beautiful, flat, floated ball across the line and Toulon had numbers on the far side. He's not looking very happy, is he? Oh dear. We've seen the two money men in recent times, Bujalal and Bruce Craig, assembled in their own way, a thoroughly watchable teams. And just a sense at the moment that um, the French money, the Euros, are just beginning to come into this game with more threat than they've shown so far. Absolutely, warning signs there for Bath. Toulon have really up their intensity, up their tempo, their accuracy slightly lapped there, but shots have been fired in the first seven minutes of the second half. Max Lahif, Bath's loose head under some pressure as Juan Smith involves himself as well again it's controlled by Houston he's having a strong game Bath number eight you see look at that the penalty goes Bath's way I don't see a huge amount of difference here the, the, the scrum turn but because it's Bath's ball and the number eight keeps the ball in at the back straightens it up referee decides to go the opposite direction with a penalty That's a Reading themselves to make some changes early on. Henry Thomas, the tight head prop, stripped off. See, look at that. The angle is exactly the same from Lahif as it was on the last scrum. Houston having a good game. Uh, Japan's World Cup star Amanaki Maffi, by the way, arrives at the end of the month. He'll provide some reinforcements and... Lupe Falatao this time next season will be throwing himself around in Bath Colours. They're stockpiling number eight at the moment, aren't they? <laughs> Definitely. Dave Denton, of course, on the bench today. Throwing Dominic Day higher than anybody else. Dave Atwood, by the way, out for up to three months after a neck operation on Tuesday. So Day and Co. will have a busy few months. Cook off that left boot. Habana comes in and uh, he was challenged by Rocco de Guni. Fair challenge in the end, according to Clancy. Uh, Gerardo continues to stoke the Toulon fires, and that's nice from Escanda. Seen much of him as a running threat so far, the number nine. Toulouse board on the bench for them. Craig Cooper and Michelac alternating roles at 10. They're a double threat these days and Habana 
Amongst those providing the link to free up Mikko Tadze and now Michelak and now Gerardo did well to get the ball to Vermoylen and Francois Lowe knew exactly how busy he needed to be. And he slowed it down a little bit. Michelak, the old circus master, the ringmaster, and now Habana, one of the circus's major attractions. A scandal once more. This is wonderful from Toulon. So watchable when they get going. And here's Cooper. And then that's been lost forward by Chile Chava. But at their best, it's 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 just red wine. It's it's sweet and it's flowing, and we saw it just then. It's incredible. I think bringing on Michelak, what he's done is expanded their game. Quay Cooper playing one way, Michelak playing the other, has really put him bath on their back foot. Sustained pressure. They've certainly got the territory. It's just lacking a bit of accuracy. But Michelak always a threat to line. Any dog legs who certainly look to penetrate and play to the width. They've just got to look after the ball once they get into the 22. Chris Cook having a great defensive game. But just these little moments here where they've just got to look after the ball because once they get those, when they get into multiple phases and they get quick ball, they are a deadly beast. We're starting to see that come into action now. Uh, Chile Chava uh, replaced Carl Heyman this season. Castro Giovanni, Martin Castro Giovanni up in Paris these days. Celesti so Maafu didn't last long. So busy times for Levan Chili Chava as a result. It's just an important spell here for Bath. They've uh, had to defend their own line a few times. Managed to uh, have been camped in their own half for a little bit of time now. They've got a scrum under their own post. Just got to do the simple things right now. Just relieve a little bit of that pressure. You're Doesn't already pre engaged. Let's take our time, slow it down. Yeah, okay, no problem. Relax. Yeah? All right, I'll deal with that. I don't think there's much more so work. You know what I'm looking for, just hold off, have the patience to wait for the set. To come for Ross Batty or David Wilson. Uh, rather, Rob Webber and David Wilson. Ross Batty and uh, Henry Thomas getting ready to join us. Rock solid, draws the penalty and all the hard work at Farley in the week with Neil Hatley and co at the scrum has been paying dividends. Really good scrum as well. I think it was just that there was a temptation to make those changes before that scrum and actually Bath just held off. Proved to be the right move. They've earned themselves a penalty and a really good opportunity just to relieve the pressure. Just the only concern for Bath, they're just starting to fall off a few of those tackles now. And some of those two long forwards have upped the pace of the game, getting them on the front foot. And as a result of that, Michelak is really able to pull the strings. Meantime, uh, those changes that we talked about, David Wilson and Rob Webber have done their afternoon's work on the Cote de Zouk. And uh, Ross Batty and Henry Thomas are on. Uh, lots of Toulon changes as well. Anthony Etriard, the hooker, and Xavier Shockey coming on for Florian Frazier and Guillaume Gerardo that's Shockey and uh, Thibaut Lasalle as well coming on for uh, Konstantin Mikotadze in the second row nicely done by Day to Cook Ford it's kind of resetting the kicking game a bit more time down in Toulon's half perhaps yeah a little bit deep deeper than he would have liked actually I think that was more of a, a cross-field kick, but it just ended up being a fairly simple routine catch for Cooper. The good news for Bath is that Ford is back to his very lively and bubbly best. He's calling all the options correctly. He hasn't had much ball in the last 10 minutes or so. Sure, in some form or another, George Ford will be coming up against Guillaume Garrado's France over the course of the Six Nations. Taking the captain's role for his country from Thierry Dussatois. Guy Noves starts to assert his authority on the new look French team. This is a new look Ross Batty. He's, uh, he's had his hair cut this season. Or at least his definition of having his hair cut. Look a bit shorter and he finds Garvey nicely. Eastman, Houston. One of those who's run his socks down to his ankles in Bath's cause so far today. Joseph and again. Ford, Habana, pedalling backwards furiously, but nothing he could do with the kick. 
Lovely bit of play there. Three-phase play from Bath. They're not messing about in that middle third. They look to penetrate through the middle. Jonathan Joseph and George Ford just linking really well. I think they actually wanted to play to the width, but Toulon defended that fantastically well. Fantastic roller kick from George Ford in behind Brian Habana. Territory certainly is key at the moment. Oh, that ball's been stolen amid some consternation. Taken on by Lowe, but then it's been lost, and this might be dangerous. Bastero. He runs into Batty. A scandal. And flung away by Cooper. Ball lost forward. Once again, a, a bit of Sunday afternoon language you could probably have done without. Sorry about that. Well, it's a familiar pattern for Toulon. You know, the... They're making too many mistakes for a team of this quality. Individual mistakes, their turnovers, just handing the possession straight back to this Bath side. Really good work on the cover tackle. You thought that, look at that, Fernando Lobby. How many times has he done that? Won the ball back for his side. But again, Toulon just making that mistake. Ball goes forward and Bath will welcome the opportunity to put the ball into the scrum. Toulon's turnovers conceded possession into double figures now it's a sign of the work that Bath are doing in that area yeah I mean their defensive work is outstanding 89% in the premiership their tackle completion which is top in the premiership they are being tested today but they certainly are stepping up to the mark just think it's a reflection of their the, the added bit of aggression and bite that they've got with this line speed that Hooper's brought to them that they're playing with today really struggled to win turnovers this season which was such a hallmark of their play last year See, last season attackingly I thought they were absolutely fantastic best side in the premiership in terms of their patterns of play today hasn't been necessarily about that it's been about heart that was questioned last week at Newcastle but they've come up trumps today they've now got to be clinical with the little ball they've got Well, this time it's Toulon who get more than a shove on and then Houston with the broom to sort things out. And Joseph, oh, to Banahan. First time he's really been able to run in space out wide with the ball in hand today. He's been busy going through those midfield channels and here's Houston again. And now it's Bath turn to try and turn the tap on. Ford cuts back inside, nearly goes through. This is Garvey. As good as Bath have been, ball in hand for a while. Here's Joseph, 50th match for the club today here in Toulon. Cook continuing to call the shots from scrum half. Ford once more, Houston. Look at Houston's carrying, really strong. A couple of times he's offered himself there for George Ford. Francois Lowe is furthest out on that right-hand side and he's chasing that little kick through now and he wasn't far away. I'll tell you what, Nick, when you're playing well, sir, sometimes the ball just bounces your way. George Ford just penetrating, poking, asking the question of Toulon's backfield there. The, ball, the, the bounce of the ball is so kind to him. Just rolls into touch. Bath is starting to look like they're about to tire at the moment. They're going to need their bench. They're going to need every single person to be able to put in a shift in there to get something out of it today. Try and put some pressure here on Etriard. He's bedding into his first season with the club and he did that nicely. Finding Smith and a scanned under pressure. Gets distance. But he only finds Rocco de Guni. Rocco de Guni running into Mata Nonu. Still going. Ford. Oh, he's done brilliantly. But it went forward and uh, Watson was a millimetre from breaking through. Well, the referee, George Clancy, was really well positioned to see that. It's just that little wry smile to himself. Beautiful bit of skill. Look at that, the show and go. But yes, it is forward. And Fernando Lobby just grabbing Watson by his coattails. Just wonderful piece of play. Taking the ball right to the line. Looking to move the ball one way then the other.
penultimate round of pool matches next weekend. We're at Rodney Parade in the Challenge Cup on Friday. Dragons against Cass. Martin Williams, Shane Williams and Sam Warburton. No big names were available, sadly. And then on Saturday in the Champions Cup, Saracens against Ulster at 2.45 at Allianz Park. Welford Road, Leicester against Treviso to keep you company on Saturday evening. Approaching the hour mark here in Toulon at the Stade Felix Mail, where Toulon don't get beaten. They're being held at the moment by a spirited bath side. Picked up by Vermoylen. He's uh, given the start today ahead of Stefan Armitage. One of those fireworks on the bench. Lovely work from Nonu to release to a sober. The speed of hand. Now Michelak and Shockey just getting in there and getting in the way a little bit but it still might work for them Fernandez Lobe Buster Juan Smith again beyond him second time they've been in this position in this half they blew the first one they're trying to build patiently again with this Michelak to Cooper LaSalle is screaming for it on the right hand side near side to us Bath at the moment have a man down so they're defending with 14 and they've done once again brilliantly to turn that ball back yeah crowd don't like it they think that it came from an offside position it was illegal but wonderful work at the breakdown and again Toulon aren't able to be accurate in the most important part of the field well Lawrence I think they've got every reason to be a little bit upset actually I think they were a little bit offside I'd love to see the replay on it but look at this to build a platform of Dwayne Vermeulen outstanding well cut but, but being able to get on the front foot gives you every opportunity. Matthew Bastereau, another powerful athlete. He gets them on the front foot. Quay Cooper just looking to set the ball. Stu Hooper comes through. Yeah. I don't know, is that offside, Low? Well, if the ruck's bought, if the ruck hasn't formed, he's well within his rights. And George Clancy was on the opposite side. He would have got the call from the assistant yeah. referee. If they felt it was an infringement. Yeah. Offered you um, an invitation to spend Saturday night with us. Uh, how about one, Sunday afternoon? Five. We're back here at the mail for Toulon against Wasps Sunday tea time at the Gardens for Northampton against Glasgow mm. fairly full package of top notch European rugby here on BT Sport next weekend and as we can see David Denton, Denton a couple of months with his new club now is on and uh, Dominic Day has been replaced and uh, Leroy Houston staying on the pitch, no great surprise, he's had a brilliant game. Stefan Armitage is on, he's taken the place of Juan Smith. Got the ball now, Armitage. Both Laporte and Mike Ford beginning to make some heavyweight changes to try and shift this evenly balanced contest in their direction. Yeah, Fernandez lobby. Here goes Cooper. Hitch step through and he just had his feet in touch and the ball in hand for half a second too long. Got to give credit to the way that Bath have defended. When they have been sort of looked like they might get beaten on the outside, they've drifted really, really well. Rockadaguni did it once over on the far side a little while ago and thwarted an attack. And then again, they just drift and allow Cooper almost to run himself into touch. And that man Houston just dragging his feet over the line. My old coach John Kingston used to say the fence was a reflection of the attitude and commitment to one another. And you've got to say Bath are thoroughly committed today. Cook goes long. Banahan empties his lungs chasing this. And he will continue to empty them because the bounce is a good one. And then he makes sure that Tua Sova had no chance to take the quick throw. What a kick from Chris Cook. He was the player that started this match so brightly. He's been fantastic. Look at that. That's from deep in his own 22. Goes behind to a sober and he gets the bounce of the ball and takes it right down into Toulon's 22. Wonderful effort. Yeah, unbelievable. Fantastic length once again from Chris Cook. He's having a massive game. Absolute huge game. Etriard chatting with Suter and co, making sure this call's right. And it was to Suter. Okay, in 15, line it over. Rather mottled pitch, by the way, because they've had so much rain down here in recent weeks. They've done well to get it playing in the way that it's playing. It's not looking at its best at the moment, but 
playing all right and Chalon trying to engineer an exit from this situation yeah. and they've not managed it Lawrence brilliant work from Matt Garvey the ball goes over 15 the crowd don't like it the referees called it over 15 which means there's no offside and you could come from round the back from in at the side and Matt Garvey does brilliantly to disrupt that turn the ball over and win inside the scrum what a couple of minutes that is for Bath the kick from Cook and then the turnover from Garvey immediately getting possession back and a great attacking opportunity Certainly, uh, the stay, they're staying within this fight. It's 9-0 with 17 minutes to go. And as you say here, Lowe, I'm sure you'll probably want to talk about this a little bit more than myself. Well, it's just great work, isn't it? He called it the padlock. He gets his arms in over the top and then just padlocks the ball, gets a bit of help from Francois Lowe. Nathan Cat coming in there too. They've really worked hard in this area and got their rewards. It's this part of the game, Nick, where they start to sort of smell the victory. They know... So Jacques Delma, forwards coach, and there's one of his charges. Xavier Shockey just in the service bay at the moment. Yeah, right there. Fairly major ramp to get him off the floor, but um, they've, they've at least got him back on the road. <laughs> He's got some work to do now. They need him ready for this scrum. It's been a really ding-dong battle in the scrum as well, actually. Bath have had their moments where they've drawn a few penalties. We've seen Houston work miracles at the back of the scrum under a bit of pressure. Got to win this ball, Bath. Uh, Etriard not happy with the space between the two front rows. Little over 15 minutes to go. All square. It's going to be a reset. Yeah, referee giving both sides the benefit of the doubt there. Ball came back on the bar side. Just moving the ball away. Would have been a bit harsh to have penalised either side there. Let's take our time. Let's get it right here now. Here's your mat. When you're driving straight, not up, you don't stand up under pressure. Yeah, just back a step, please. No, just back a step. Let's go, Let's go, Pitch is playing well, despite all that rain that we talked about that they've had down here. Yeah, just got George Ford standing just behind, right behind, directly behind the scrum. Three European games back to back over the next three weekends for Bath that'll decide if they can make it to the Champions Cup quarterfinals again this season. Talon here, of course, and then they've got them back at the wreck and they've got Leinster in Dublin. A lot of hard work if they're to make the final eight in the Champions Cup this season. What an effort from them so far here on a Sunday afternoon in the south of France. Nick, I played here a few years ago. And funny enough, we got absolutely walloped by Toulon. But the one thing you've got to come with, apart from your tactical game, is serious amount of belief. And Bath have brought that today, is whether or not they can sustain it for the next 13 minutes. Well, they got a free kick, and Cook's taking it quickly, and this is low on the charge. He's spitting as much determination as anyone at the moment. Cook crying out for quick ball. It's there. Thomas has laid it back, well Ford thought about another drop goal which would have been his third, instead he found the safety of the arms of Stuart Hooper. Here goes Cat. that's a good drive, two forwards latched onto him, got him going forward there. Ford with Houston running onto it, down on his knees but quickly back on his feet. Like Nonu doing his best to wrestle that ball back, it's a ferocious contest for it. Ford looking for Banahan who has to come in field a little bit to find the ball. Oh wonderful to low. Hooper was up in support. Lowe couldn't get the ball away. For half a second the door was opening. Referee just playing advantage for that low knock-on, seeing if Toulon want to break away out their own 22. It's on here, Lawrence. 
Now one one line break, it could be all on. And the advantage for the knock on is over. You'll have heard George Clancy tell us. And Talon just happy enough to reset on halfway. I'm just really enjoying George Ford's position here. Cramp is becoming a factor. I mean, this game has been played at an incredible tempo. We saw him drop into the pocket, we saw him play to the width, and then we saw him expose the space out wide. If not just for the handling of Francois Lowe, this is an outstanding kick. Absolute pinpoint. Six foot seven, Matt Banahan out the back door to Francois Lowe. He's had a huge game. One offload away from a potential try. Too long stay in this game. Well, we give Quay Cooper a bit of stick occasionally for the way he's played in an attacking sense, but he just did enough there on Francois Lowe to force the knock-on. You'll know the tradition in these parts uh, of the newspapers that are positioned on the seats before the match being flung into the air when the locals think that the contest is over. At the moment, they are snugly underneath the bottoms of the 15,000 still here. They're not used to seeing their heroes being pushed as hard as they're being pushed at the moment. Sebastian Tillis board coming on for Erika Skander at scrum half for them. 30 now, memories of those three European Cup final wins. He might be the man to drive them home. Taken by Garvey. Ford takes a step backwards. Banahan edges to the left-hand side. They're just being patient, aren't they? Chris Cook just organising, marshalling his forwards together. Here's Denton. The man who came in to replace Sam Burgess when he headed back to Australia. Ford again. Low offering himself. Instead it's Eastman. Oh, that's really nice. And over the top to Watson and Rocco Dagoon is away to the right-hand side. And once again, this time on the right-hand side, Bafa pressing. Ford. Batty. Calling for quick ball, which they get. Ford again. Eastman. Quick feet to engineer an opportunity for a try that would go down in history, maybe. Still a little more than ten minutes to go at the Felix Mayol and... Tolana defending like champions at the moment, but Garvey still has it. This is Cat. Real furious contest for the ball at the breakdown. Ford's back for a hat-trick of drop goals and the lead. Not on this occasion. Just went right of the upright. It was the right option, given that they've been repelled in the tackle and knocked back. Go on, score it off. I mean, the margins are just so tight. I'm, I'm just loving the way this game's played. I mean, it is desperation. Toulon are defending like champions. Bath need this to turn their season around. They need this. They are clicking. They need to stay within this group. Everyone's desperate for this result. Ten minutes to go. And who's going to be the one to unlock that defence? Who's going to be the one to mentally just drop off? Slip off the tackle. Rocker Daguni will start to build bricks again from halfway. Low waiting for it. Instead, it went to Ross Batty. Just moved beyond 100 games for the club. Ford. Being challenged by Michelak, but he gets the kick away. Cooper was underneath it. Cooper did brilliantly. And for all of the bath pressure in recent minutes, we know just what Talon are capable of and shocking neatly to Suter. What are you pointing at? Well, they're just worried that Toulon may be getting some numbers on that far side. This is Nonu. <laughs> Francois Lowe on the floor. And he did brilliantly. And this is Cook. Now there's real opportunity. Oh, the pass from Cook was behind Rocco de Guni. And that rather took the threat out of the move, but still bad possession. Ford. Taken on by Thomas. Joseph. Nicely done to Watson. Watson's just beginning to link up a little bit more threateningly, but that won't help. Nick, we are seeing rugby of the highest quality. 
the ability for top players, Josephs, Anthony Watson, for the balls to come to the line, to cut angles. Marlon are exactly the same, and we said absolute top quality defence. That's exactly why this game is locked the way it is at the moment. And the way things stand, this Paul, Paul 5, fascinatingly poised. As it stands, Wasps still leading with 14 points. Toulon and Bath will have 10. Leinster are out of it. Next Saturday, Leinster against Bath in Dublin. Here on Sunday, Toulon against Wasps. It's um, absolutely fascinating, numbers-wise, in Paul 5 right now. Well, it was always the one that stood out when they did the draw for this way back. Something like nine European trophies between the teams in this pool and it certainly played out that way titanic battle again today final round of matches by the way in a fortnight Bath against Toulon at the wreck Wasps against Leicester at the Rico as Toulon make another change Maxime Mermoz coming on to replace Mathieu Bastereau Stuart Hooper who has emptied the tank today unbelievable performance from their skipper given he's been out for such a long period of time to come into and intensity and a game played at such pace I think he's been magnificent today and I'll tell you what he's not injured there he's just taken out the, the impetus the momentum out of Toulon's Toulon's attack upsetting the crowd making them wait Lasalle oh, he took the line out and then Cook very nearly onto it what a moment that was and Cook kicks the ball away wow what a wonderful piece of vision he saw what was happening there Look at him, he's on his bike straight away, nothing offside about that. Would have been a score at such a crucial time. Well, it would have been the moment of Chris Cook's career oh. if only he'd have gotten onto it. Absolutely, well, you've got to go back to the work of Stuart Hooper at the line-out, forcing Toulon to throw to the front, which means they've got to, the scrum half's got to throw the ball 20 metres. Chris Cook, he read it, just couldn't execute. Number six, black substitution, six. Matt Garvey. Uh, Charlie Yules, 20 year old with just a, a handful of European appearances so far adding to that experience all the time and he can now tick off the start Felix Mayol Charlie Yules with us and a pat on the back from Francois Lowe as he joins the fun front row in an awkward position and Vermoyland gets the ball away and Nonu and Cooper with to a sober to his left <laughs> to lose board to La Salle or penalty to Toulon yeah just Bath a little bit over eager on the front foot there trying to get their line speed I was just about to say they've been dominating the field position for the last 10 minutes or so really really well that one penalty which has been a real problem for them well that one penalty could really cost them i was talking to darren edwards before the game toulon averaged 22 line outs in attack in opposition 22 they use it as a massive weapon you look at how they turn their game around against leinster at the rds this line out could be their opportunity this could be their moment to us over with them um, a little bit more petrol he's absolutely out on his feet Bath have done what they came here to do in terms of testing Toulon's fitness now they've got an own own defensive test one by the captain Juan Martin Fernandez Lobe approaching the final five minutes Bath have taken the champions 12 rounds but they're on the ropes now Fernandez Lobe, phalanx of black shirts fly over the top and they think they might have won it back. Oh, it's a penalty! A penalty to the to Toulon. Yeah, I think it's the new man that's just come on. Yules, was it, that came through the middle. 
pretty obvious what the decision will be. I'm just about to say, Bath have got to be very, very careful not to concede again in that area. And they look like they've repelled that Toulon driving more legally. Just to a judge who have come in, is it Nathan Cat? When you're up against that quality of opposition, like what Toulon possess, your penalty, your penalty count has got to be a minimal. Bar's penalty count is high today, giving them opportunities and a silly penalty like that, so cynical, right in front of the referee, given a massive opportunity with four and a half minutes to go. Stuart Hooper's still got his wits about him. He's making sure that the Bath players are, are properly positioned for this kick, just in case Michelat doesn't splice the uprights. But this for the lead for the first time. That's why they're champions. You can bash them about on the ropes, but unless you get them down, Toulon are never beaten. And for the first time in this contest, Toulon are ahead. We've just got to think about the last 90 seconds. Chris Cook almost an intercept 60 meters up the pitch just by a fingertip he just missed it silly penalty kick to the corner another cynical one in front of the referee and Toulon are back in the lead oh. and the restart all important and how well did Thibaut LaSalle do to rise highest under some pressure three and a half minutes to go Suter and for the first time since pretty much the opening whistle the voices of the locals with a little bit of hope Denton George Ford who's had his best game of the season but Nonu holds him up on halfway Banahan is rather isolated so he came back in field Solon are a man down at the moment. Joseph, Thomas, now Watson, click through, Rocco de Guni chasing it and hacked clear in um, fairly desperate straights by Freddie Michelac, but he did the job well. He did the job well, but it does set up a little opportunity now, maybe the last opportunity for Bath to get something out of this game. They have the line out, they have the put in, they haven't, points have been at a premium in this match. The last time they were down here in this 22, they weren't able to come away with anything. There's a break in play for, um, for Jocelyn the Suter and Francois Lowe as well. Lawrence, you've been in these positions many a time. I remember you snatching a game against Munster, Trevor Leota scoring in the corner. If you were captain, captain in Bath, if you were Stuart Hooper, what exactly would you be saying in this huddle right now? Well, it's about the execution of the line-out. That's first things first. Got to secure the ball. As again. Mikko Tadz is coming back on, which um, suggests that uh, Suter must have a, a blood problem. And he's making his way off um, rather gingerly, rather slowly. Yeah, they'll call the ball batty there under a bit of pressure but just go through your core skills get it right win the ball the same way as Toulon just drew the penalty from the driving wall expect something similar oh the ball has been lost and it's gathered by Chockey and there are the moments there are the moments two minutes to go 20 meters from the try line of the champions and Bath will know that as Tillu's board clears to Rocco de Guni. But look where they are, they're back on halfway. Yeah, you've got to credit Toulon. They put two pods up there on the line out. They knew what they were doing. Under pressure, put both pods up and managed to snap all the ball away from Bath. And furthermore, Rocco de Guni had the ball in his hands before he planted his feet. So the, the loss of this line out has been compounded because Toulon will have the throw in. But let's look at. For Merlin going up and snatching the ball from the fingertips of Yules, and there's only a split second. But a couple of key moments. They've been far from their best, haven't they, Toulon? 
been a wonderful effort from Bath. But you'd expect now with the experience. Break from Nonu is one of the big stars to finish it off here. Here's Tua Sova. Oh, he's lost it. Opportunity lost. I'm not sure why they wanted to put any whip from that whip from this. Michelac sees it. Nonu, fantastic break. But how about this for a pass off his left to us over? You just think recycle the ball. There's about a minute left. That's all you need to do. And the game is yours. But no, they invite Bath back into the game. 40 seconds left. This will really test their metal. I think we heard the um, the cries of pain from Juan Martin Fernandez Lobe as that ball was flipped away by Toulon. They're getting him back on his feet. Two us over is down as well. Been a really bruising contest, hasn't he? from uh, players littered all over the pitch either on one knee or off their feet they're given absolutely everything well when the ball's in play for that long I think it really tests you mentally we can see how it's testing the players physically but to put it into contest Bath have come here not with great form but Toulon have only offered up one losing bonus point in the last 15 home games it's been an incredible contest there's still 40 seconds on the clock George Ford, Carl Eastman, Jonathan Joseph, Anthony Watson, they've got to click. They've got to be at their very best to score a try from 60 metres. Not got the newspapers just yet, but we've got the Marseillaise, which hints at home hope that they'll be uh, heading back into the Toulon night with the hardest of earned victories. One or two bits of paper flying in the air now, but it's... Uh, it's not wholehearted agreement. They know that Bath have played so well that there's another 30 seconds worth of work to do here and the skipper is wounded but back on his feet. He's in agony, I can tell you that now. He doesn't really want to pack that on this scrum. He's going down on the short side. He's given everything. He's been a real thorn in Bath's side at the turnover, at the breakdown. What can Bath conjure up? Just a reminder, Toulon have, have never been beaten at home here at the Stade Felix Mayo in the European Cup. 18 home games, they've not lost one of them. That's how close Bath have come to creating a little bit of history here this afternoon. And they, they still have a little bit of hope. You've got to feel for Bath as well because they've given their absolute all and they certainly don't deserve to lose. It's just that clinical one piece of possession at the critical moment and Toulon were able to draw the penalty. Taken by Denton. One last hurrah. Ford, he fires it into Nonu. Ball's gone backwards. But um, Bath are working off scraps and expiring hope here. That's much, much better from the English team. But the French boss acknowledges his champions. That's why they're champions. Few have pushed them harder here down the years at the start Felix Mayol than Bath have just done but in the end it's a familiar scoreline it's the home side winning Michelac's penalty towards the end in the end the difference but how well Bath have played they've got their season back on the rails make no mistake about that but we've just seen how difficult it's going to be for anybody to derail the champions Toulon 12 Bath 9